Hi guys, so welcome back to the channel. I'm James, this is Raf, and uh, we're following on from the previous video where Ash was dissecting the server. We're now going to be introducing a little bit of a new series about hypervisors and hypervisor labs. So the idea against this is that um, we'll talk to you about the different kinds of hardware that you could use for your lab and uh, what is good and what isn't and ultimately do we really care about what the actual hardware is because it's a lab after all. So I've got a nice stack of uh, equipment here that we're going to take you through and we'll just run through that quickly and then Raf is going to speak to you about hypervisor technologies a little bit. Following on from that we're then going to do a nice CPU and RAM install and that will then go into a software install of the hypervisor. So the first server that we have, this is a Dell PowerEdge R510. You can see it's got many disks at the front. The benefit of this guy is that you can have 12, five, three and a half inch disks at the front, and then there's two disks in the, uh, in the inside as well. So what that means is, is that you can have your OS inside, you can have lots of storage in the front, which is great for a home lab, so you don't have, have to have loads of equipment um, to do a large lab. So that's the first one. Raf's going to help me lift this one off. The next one I have is an R620. Now the reason I grabbed this was because it's fairly new, in terms of new, shall I say, but it's only a 1U server. Just to kind of emphasise the fact that how big it is doesn't really matter. You can still fit quite a lot of storage at the front, or you could use it with just two disks like I have, and then have extra storage at the back. So my next bit of equipment here is a Dell Harridge 2950. These are quite old, they're 2008. But what's great about these is they're probably 10, 20 quid off eBay, maybe less, or you could get them for free. So if you're just starting out, you need a bit of equipment, grab one of these, they still do virtualization, which means that you can just start a lab for a minimal amount of money. You don't need the best amount of equipment out there to start off. So you've got six hard drives at the front, you've still got dual power supplies and stuff like that in the back, still does two quad core CPUs, yeah it's DDR2 but you can get 64 gig of RAM in there which is great for running lots of VMs. And the last one which you can just about see, this is a Dell Parage R630XD, these are relatively newer now. What's great about these is you still have the 12 drives at the front and it also means that you have the two hard drives at the back which are hot swappable, which is different from the R510 series. So you can swap out your OS disk without having to open the chassis itself. So being as these are newer, they support DDR4 and the newer generation of CPUs as well. And this is the one that we're going to be using in the video today to do a CPU and RAM install. So Raf is now going to introduce you to a little bit more about actual hypervisor technology and the software that's involved with it. Raf, over to you. Uh, hypervisors would allow you to, on a single physical server, on a single piece of kit, run multiple virtual machines. So that would allow you to use entire processing power, entire thing, uh, and it will streamline the work you're doing, it will allow you to use multiple fake machines using a single thing. Uh, to achieve that you can go separate ways, you can do multiple ways. Uh, what we are doing today is ESXi, so we're going to install a shell that will run virtual servers, but you can also install an OS and on that OS you will install virtual machines. So yeah, there's uh, multiple ways about doing that, Microsoft's doing Hyper-V, uh, you can do Citrix, you, we're doing ESXi which is VMware and then again you can even install Linux on it and then use KVM to launch your virtual machines. So, what we're going to do next is we're going to install the CPUs and RAM into the server. You may actually hate me for doing this because I got my own method of doing this. It's my server, so if there's something you don't like, what can I say? It's just my method really. So this is the Dell R730XD. 
There are some do, two different versions, maybe more different versions of this on the internet. Um, you can get hard drives in the middle and stuff. You can get bigger CPUs, more RAM, whatever. It actually takes GPUs as well, which is pretty cool. It's got outlets on the inside for 8-pin power cables, which is quite unique, really, just for a normal server that's not built for GPUs. Um, yeah, so I've actually I bought these off the internet. As with all, everything that I buy comes off the internet and does shops now. Um, I've got two CPUs here. These, these are E5 2620V3s. Um, there is only six core 12 threads. I didn't want anything bigger than that. You can get like 18 core somethings. But for what I'm doing for this, 12 cores is fine. Thing is, I've forgotten a screwdriver, so we're about to go get a screwdriver. So we have a screwdriver now, which is great. Kind of need one of these to start off. So, the person that's delivered this to me has just put the uh, heat sinks on lightly. Hopefully the sockets are okay and there aren't any pins bent. Otherwise I'll be bending them back with a uh, pair of tweezers. Okay. Seems okay. So when you're doing these, these particular sockets have two levers. And inside the socket and CPU, you'll see the socket has 90 degree angles on it apart from one. And that 90 degree angle has a bit chopped off. And then on the CPU, I've got a little triangle. So I always want to match up the triangle with the cut up bit of the socket. And you carefully lower that guy in without pressing it down. So these are actually called ZIF sockets. It stands for zero insertion force, which means you don't press it, don't press the CPU into the socket because you don't need to. So he's in the happy. There's a screwdriver, there is. Time for the second one. So this guy is CPU2. Very helpful on the motherboard. Once you've taken the uh, heat sink off, it actually tells you what CPU is what. So again, release the retaining clips. the little triangle up into the socket. Don't drop the CPU into the socket because you'll have a bad day. Cool, so that bit's done. So the next bit now, now I have my own method of doing this. My method is to spread. Some like to do a dot, some like to do a line. So I'm going to do a spread. There was a cool video on the internet that actually tried to explain reasons why and what, what way was better. I like this because I think it gives you a, a better spread of the paste rather than it just kind of turning out to be a dollop in the middle of the CPU. So I'm carefully spreading the paste across the CPU in all directions to make it as even as possible. My thinking behind this is that actually if I'm getting an even spread across the whole heatsink, I'm more likely to get a better thermal distribution on the actual CPU itself. Now, the different, there are different paces about, and I reckon some spread different than others, so your results may vary. So that's pretty even spread now. And then when I stick that heat sink on, it will just spread it even further if it needs to. We should get a pretty good seal. I'm going to make sure you get this on right. So when you're doing these up, what you want to do is make sure you go diagonally to give an even pressure against the socket rather than doing one side up first and then the other. This is always the better way to do things up. 
and with these you can't over tighten them either so once it's done up it's done up you can't go any further so what I'll do actually is, is I'm going to invite Raf to do the next CPU he didn't know I was going to do that but I would do it totally now differently I would just place a single dot on the CPU and just screw the hits in it. I'm sure everyone's in the comments going, no, don't do it like that, but it's my server, as I say. To be quite honest, this works, this works. So use whatever you like. I reckon my CPU will be one degree cooler. So if you want to do the RAM as well. Yeah. So when it comes to RAM on the server, it's a bit more complicated than on a desktop machine because you have many slots and we only have four RAM sticks. Yeah. yeah so we've only got four RAM sticks. So Dell are quite good. They do these cool diagrams on the back of the panels and they show exactly what is what. So on here, because we've got four sticks, yep. we want to make sure that we do A1 Right, so A1 and A2. Right. So they go, they're white, those guys. It just goes in. Bob. 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 Yeah. A2. A2. That one? Yeah. yeah. And then you want B1 and B2. Okay, so B1, that one, B2, it goes white. Mm -hmm. The DDR4 is actually slightly different in that it's got a bit of a curve on the uh, RAM stick compared to DDR3. And you want to make sure that you're always lining the slots up and you're not forcing it in. Cool. There you go. Right, so that bit's that done. Right, so the next thing is we're just going to put the server back together and then we can get on with installing the hypervisor itself. Okay guys, so we're going to make a cut in here. What we've achieved so far is we do have now a fully working server. We do have two CPUs, we do have RAM installed. In the next video we're going to put the drives in. We're going to configure RAID, whichever RAID James picks because that's his server. And then I already have pre-prepared a USB flash drive with, with uh, ESXi. So stay tuned because that's coming next.